Welcome to another edition of the Gold Nose Podcast. I am your host, Gregory McCoy. This podcast is by a fan for fans. I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. I am not a insider. I do not work for a website. The majority of my content comes from me, in my opinion. Other information comes from the internet. Um, usually I just jump right into like Florida State stuff, but I just want to say a few things before I do that. Um, YouTube in particular, not YouTube, the actual site, just YouTube creators, other YouTube creators that like to troll uh, channels and get people banned and demonetized and all this nonsense. Look, I don't care about that. I'm not making any money off of this. That's not my motivation. I'm not trying to be a YouTube sensation. Um, obviously, I'm doing something right because, you know, whoever it is keeps trying to get my videos banned or flagged or demonetized or whatever. And it's cool, man. You know, I, 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 I'm I not going to get bent out of shape about it. Um, I do this, like I said, when I was a little kid, uh, you know, Florida State football was like, the thing that kept me out of trouble. And that's why I love Florida State football so much. You know, watching Deion Sanders as a kid. Um, so, um, whatever, man. Keep the hate coming, man. I mean, every time I see something that's getting flagged or whatever, I know that I'm doing something right. You know, if nobody was paying my channel any attention... I I would be, you know, like, wow, I'm really, you know, not doing anything worthwhile. So I'm never going to stop making videos. I'm never going to stop making my podcast. And, you know, obviously I'm going to have to stop one day when I'm dead. But that's the only way I'm going to stop. Um, What else? Uh, started a, a Twitch. Well, I've I've always had my Twitch channel. I just started upload videos on that. Um, that link is uh, on the podcast. That link is on the YouTube channel. And uh, so now that we've got that nonsense out of the way, uh, Florida State, man. Um, first and foremost, Deion Sanders. Hope he, uh, you know, re- recovers from his surgeries and just gets a you know a full you know good bill of health and I just hope he's out there doing his thing at Colorado. I'm always going to pull for Dion, man. Okay. So um he stole recruits from us. I don't I don't I don't put no stock in none of that stuff. He's doing his job. He's doing what other coaches do. This happens every recruiting season. Okay? You know, he's trying to send a message to Florida State that, hey, you should have gave me an opportunity. I kind of understand what he's doing, but whatever. No one kid is going to come in there and just change the course of the program. So it is what it is. So best wishes to Dion and his health. I hope they have a great season. They're saying Colorado might go back to the Big 12. They should have never left the Big 12 to begin with. So now we got that out the way. Now, Florida State. The reason for this podcast. Um, I, I I seen something that says we could possibly be a, a top three team in the country. I don't feel like today we're a top three team in the country. Now, maybe by the end of the season we could be. I think that top three thing is just to sell the LSU game. Um, but... In particular to the fan base, you, you guys just need to relax, okay? I I thought, I still think we're a year away. But obviously with the talent that, the talent that we have this season, most of that talent's not going to be returning next year. You're going to have a lot of young talent out there next year. So I, I just try to keep things in perspective. I mean, playoff team, maybe. I think you have a better chance of winning the ACC championship or beating Clemson. 
But first, you got to get past LSU. If we can get past LSU and Clemson, then I think we got a shot. Um, But the fan base, you guys are so temperamental. Like a couple years ago, you know, everybody was ready to burn the house down. Now everybody's ready to build a, a 50,000 square foot house mansion. So it's just so up and down with with the um, fan base. Um, I think on paper we have a great team, potentially a great team, but it's just on paper. You don't win games on paper. I like, I like that Mike Norvell put a lot of emphasis on the running game last season. I hope that continues. And I still think... Jordan Travis, he took a humongous step last season. He needs to take another, he needs to go to another level. You know, the Winky level, the the Winston level, the Ward level. He needs to he needs to make that ascension. And uh I, I think if we get great quarterback play, if we get great offensive line play. The defense played very well last season in terms of overall. I think the run defense was very suspect. Um, if we can shore up the run defense, I think we're going to be a tough team to beat. Um, but even with that, even with everybody putting us in the ACC championship and saying that we're a playoff team, you know, Wake Forest whooped us last year. Okay. There, there was a lot of teams that just ran the ball down our throat. So, like, like I said, you you have to have reasonable uh, expectations. I, I still think we're taking baby steps to get back to where we were 10 years ago. I think we're still taking baby steps. I don't think... Okay, we've we've basically been mediocre the last seven years, six years, and we have one good season, and then all of a sudden we're just back. I I don't I don't I don't think so. I don't think so. And I'm just I'm just being realistic. You know, I want these guys to win all their games. And go to the playoff and win the national championship. That's what I want. That's what I want every year for my boys, for my team. But I, I don't think you can live. You know what I'm saying? You can't live in that bubble. You got to be, you got to deal with reality. And the reality is, is that Florida State has been mediocre. Six out of the last seven seasons. Ten and three is a great year. But that's not a Florida State year that we are accustomed to having we're we're accustomed to being undefeated 11 and 1 ACC championship game French national championship playoff team that's the that's the standard so it's it's great to have those expectations also I don't want to say that we should you know, want our guys or expect our guys to not have those expectations. The players, the fans, we, 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 you got to hold the standard. I, I get that. But you also have to be realistic. Okay. I, I, I think if, if there was ever a year that we could be back as some, as some people, some fans like to say, this is it. Um, but I, I, you know, I'm extremely happy that we're even having these conversations, you know, for the past six out of seven seasons, we, we, we were a laughing stock in terms of offensive line and overall as a program. Um, and again, Mike Norvell was the right guy for this job. I, I, when I first started this podcast, I, I said I had an episode. I still have that episode. Uh, no Norvell, please. And it's actually one of the more listened to episodes in the history of this podcast. Um, 
I was wrong. And I hope I continue to be wrong. Like I said, I'll I'll uh I I'll eat those sour apples, you know, forever. If he's winning. So um hopefully we have a great season. The only reason why I talk about Colorado is again the Dion Florida State connection. So um anything I say about Colorado again is because of Dion. So Colorado is going back to the Big 12. And when they made that move to the Pac-12, everybody was scratching their head like, why? This is not a premier conference in terms of revenue. Okay, you're not going to the most watched conferences even back then were the Big 10 and the uh, SEC. So, you know, when Missouri and Texas A&M made that move to the SEC, it made sense all the way around. But when Colorado made the move to the Pac-12 or Pac-10 at that time, it made no sense. But, uh, you know, the Big 12 has recovered. You know, they've got some pretty good teams in there now. And, you know, I think they're going to, I think they, they're going to eventually have to probably, the Pac-12, that is, are going to have to merge with someone, whether it be the Mountain West or the Big 12. I mean, they're done. They're done. I seen something on the Internet where it was like four divisions within the um, Big 10. Um, and it had like uh, all the major Pac-12 teams on the West Coast. Then they went like Midwest, Central, and East. And it, it looked it looked pretty, you know, presentable to me. But whatever. Um, Florida State is in the expansion market apparently, and um. I mean, I really don't care. Like, I don't care who they play in the regular season other than the Florida Gators and the Miami Hurricanes. As long as we keep those two teams on the schedule, I'm I'm happy. Um, You know, if we get into a situation where they're no longer on the schedule, I would be very disappointed. Um, And I can say even the Clemson game. If that game is not on the schedule, I would be um, very unhappy. I mean, those are just games that I've grown to. I mean, I've planned life events around those games. So um, I would uh, be very upset if we're no longer playing those teams. Uh, You know, expansion is here, man. And, you know, I just think as as – these networks offer money and more money. This this is going to be the, uh, the, the status quo for college football. I mean, it's all gearing towards a NFL-type model. As I said with that uh, Big Ten uh, divisions uh, example, um, and I don't remember how they had everything lined up, but they had like four divisions and it looked like the NFL, like one conference of the NFL. So I think they they really want the whole uh, college football landscape to be that way. Um, I wouldn't be upset with it. Um, we're going to lose a lot of rivalry games, which – is to me makes college football as great as it is. Um, it's just it's just the state of college football now. Money has always ran the sport. It's just more uh, obvious now. I mean, with the NIL deals and just these TV deals, you know, way back in the day, you never heard about TV deals. You heard about kids getting paid under the table. Every once in a while, um, 
But that's just how it is now. So, you know, whatever. I, I just want football. That's all I want. I don't want any of this stuff to impede on my team and stop my team from, you know, becoming what they used to be 10 years ago. Um, and, you know, speaking of that, it really is really crazy how this feels like tw- 2013. I mean, 2012, we come off a decent season. 2022, we come off a decent season. And now, you know, we're, we're ex- the expectations are back. So it's kind of weird how everything lines up perfectly with the uh, 10-year anniversary. Um, but I'll take it, man. I'll, I'll take whatever I can get as far as uh, getting back to the, uh, the uh, winning circle in college football. The LSU game. Um, I'm not really going to go into too much uh, depth on that game until uh, September, beginning of September. I don't want to, you know, spoil any of the uh, thing, you know, the stuff that I want to say about that game. Um, I'll just say that, you know, Florida State came out last year where it matters the most, the offensive line and defensive line, and they dominated for three quarters. Um, LSU figured it out and came back. Uh, I think LSU knows what to expect this year, and I just feel like um, they're going to have to, you know, go times 10 on that effort. Um, So when that game comes along, I have more uh, information or uh, content, uh, quotation marks, uh, and just more things to say about that game. Uh, Florida State, the football team is in in a really good spot right now. Um, I think it's an excellent opportunity to gain some ground on Clemson and even beat Clemson. Um I if if I'm picking I would rather lose. I would not lose. I would rather not lose at all, but if we're going to lose, I say lose the first game, win the ACC championship. Um preferably go undefeated. I think this team has the talent to do that. Is the real question is can Mike Norvell motivate these guys for 12 games? Can Mike Novell get these guys to lock in for 12 weeks as far as games? Can the offensive and defensive lines dominate for 12 weeks? Can we stay somewhat injury-free for 12 weeks? Um, I mean, and, and again, give Mike Novell credit for going out and getting the talent. Give him credit. He's done you know, a tremendous job with that. Um, you know, I, I enjoy being wrong about him. And, you know, if I ever get an opportunity to interview him, I would I would tell him the same thing. I was completely wrong. I'm glad you're here at Florida State at this point in time. Uh I don't I'm not going to do like a season prediction yet. I'll wait until the beginning of the season. I'm going to have the same format. I'll have a uh, I'll drop my episode like that uh Thursday before the game or if you know just a few days before the game whether it's a Thursday or a Saturday um uh, right after the game, a few hours, I'll have my uh, instant reaction, and uh, you know that's that's pretty much the, that format worked pretty good last season, so I'm going to stick with it. Uh, I think Jordan Travis, 
you know, to me, other the the most important position groups in football. Make no mistake about it. It's offensive line, defensive line. You look, you I mean, you just look at Georgia and Alabama. You know, dominant offensive and defensive line play, and they're consistently in the playoff or the national championship game. That's really the key to this. And then secondly is strength and conditioning. You have to have elite strength and conditioning. You have to have an elite Olympic-style weight room. Okay, and then once you have that, you have to have a strength and conditioning uh, coach, coordinator, whatever you want to call him, that knows what he's doing. You have to have a nutrition program that's elite. Um, You have to get the right players. And, uh, you know, Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, Ohio State, those are the teams that consistently do that. LSU here and there. Um, but those are the schools that that do it. And I, I want I want Florida State to be in that group. Um, I really think it's time, man. I think we've been waiting a long time for Florida State to be relevant again. Again, last season, 10 and 3 was a was an okay season. That's not the standard. The standard is to consistently be a playoff team. The standard is consistently, you know, no more than one loss. Um, the, the consistency is dominate the ACC. Um, and I know I, I skipped off the, the uh, expansion topic, but... The only way the ACC is going to survive is to get Notre Dame. That's really the only way. Notre Dame can save the uh, ACC. Um, I I really don't see any other school that can do it. I mean, if the Big Ten gets Notre Dame, it might be open season on the ACC. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing, I'm reading... I'm seeing that Florida State is actively trying to get out of the ACC. Um, I don't think that would be a great football move. I think it would be a great TV money move. Potentially, you're going to get 40 to $50 million every year for that TV deal. If you go to the Big Ten or the SEC, more than likely it would be the SEC. Um And that's just the business of the sport in this day and age. So I completely understand it. I don't think it would be a great football move because you're consistently going to be, you know, in a league that's, you know, if it's the SEC or the Big Ten, you're going to consistently be in a league where you're playing the best teams every year. And, you know, if we're going to go to that model where we're not going to play cupcakes anymore, I'm all for it. But... um you know, I you know, it, it's just it's weird, man. It's just it was weird several years ago when you had the mini expansion thing with Texas A and M and Missouri, Colorado, and and Nebraska. So, and we thought the Big Twelve was done. So you know, I'm not gonna count the Pac twelve out. They they might just make some moves and get back. So we, you never know. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. If you're a first time listener of this podcast, um, I don't do like in depth recruiting analysis. I, I just as a older person, um, I just find it kind of creepy to be trying to stalk. 18 year old kids about where they want to go to college and play football. Um, So, I mean, once they're signed, sealed and delivered and officially on campus and, you know, Florida State Seminoles, then that's when I speak on it. And I really don't say, well, he's going to be this and he's going to be that. I wait until I actually see them play because you don't know how a kid is going to transfer from high school to college 
So I just wait until I actually see the guy play and then I tell you that or I give you my opinion about what I think his career at at Florida State is going to be. Okay, I am a average Joe Blow fan. Like if I come on here and try to uh, regurgitate recruiting stuff, it's obviously going to sound like I'm, you know, got that information from some other stuff some other site, some other, you know, content creator. And I I don't do my podcast like that. Most of my stuff is just going to be in my own opinion, like the realignment stuff. I've, I've watched stuff on YouTube about the technical aspect of realignment and the money aspect and all that stuff. And I'm not going to, you know, regurgitate that stuff to you guys. I'm just going to say, hey, I don't care what conference they play in. It's three games that I would like to see them keep on the schedule. Clemson, Florida, and Miami. After those three games, I don't care who they play. I don't care if it's Big 12, Big 10, SEC. It just doesn't matter. As long as I can get those three games, I'm happy. Um, and that's that's really it. Uh, that's, that's really how I do my podcast. So... Um, just had a couple people, um, email me saying, you know, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? I mean, I don't believe in, you know, repeating or regurgitating something that somebody else said. I'm just gonna give you a couple of things when it comes to this podcast. One, how do we get back to the national championship? Um, how do we stay relevant uh, things that happen on game day and, uh, and just like a season summary after the season. And then if we're lucky enough to go to a bowl game, I'll break that down, but that's pretty much how I do it. Um, you know, I'm not going to do a whole bunch of analytics. Um, one, I don't have access to analytics. So again, if I come on here, quoting analytics is going to, you're going to know that I'm just repeating other stuff, you know, obviously, you know, stuff that you see during the game, like, you know, yards and completions and running attempts and things of that nature, tackles, sacks. I mean, we can say that stuff, but, you know, coming on here saying, OK, when Florida State is in long distance situations, they should run this play. They should run that play like that is what the analytics say. I'm listen, guys. That's not me. I don't do that type of podcast. And you know, if that's the kind of content you want, I understand it. I don't take any of this personally. Um, like I said, I'm just a diehard Florida State, you know, everyday Joe Blow fan. Nothing special here. I appreciate. The people that have supported this podcast, Um, you know, I never thought it would be anything. It was to me, it's just a way to, you know, just it's like a hobby. It's just an escape for a few minutes here and there just to talk about sports and get your mind off the everyday grind of life. And. The people that take time out of their life to listen to this podcast, I really do appreciate it. Um, I, well, first and foremost, the podcast is available on every major platform. Um, It's on YouTube. Um, I just started a Twitch. Well, I've had the Twitch gaming channel for a minute. Um, I just never really put any content on it. I'm starting to put content on that. Um, if you're whatever, wherever you, wherever you're listening to this podcast at, I'm pretty sure the link will be in the description. Um, and you know, we're on, I hope we're on the cusp, Florida state. That is, I hope we're on the cusp of greatness. I hope we can get back to being the Florida state of old. I look forward to, uh, you know, just one day being able to say, hey, we get in that fourth championship. And, uh, you know, it's just I do this for the I love football. Okay, Um, 
And, um, you know, every day, every time, not every day, but every day, every day that I get to put a podcast together and talk about Florida State and somebody, again, takes time out of their life to hear me speak, I really do appreciate it. So, um, again, the podcast is available on on every major platform. Uh, it's on YouTube. And as always, go Knowles.